Checking in today with uh, Quincy City Council President, Councilor at Large, Noel DeBono, who's taking his uh, morning constitutional. Hi, I know. <laughs> good morning, Joe. We're going to do something a little different today. Um, the weather's beautiful. The weather has gotten so much better. So why not take a walk and get the steps in while we're uh, doing our interview? So <laughs> I want to. I want to see your, president. I want to see your pedometer when we're done with the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. No problem. Uh, how'd the meeting go last night? Very good, actually. Very good. Um, we actually had some committee meetings prior to the regular city council meeting. Ordinance, obviously, we had. Uh, um, the municipal light got pulled out, out of committee and was voted on to, to move forward with Ian Kane. He's been working on it for about four years. Uh, very important area to, to barely work on um, to give options for the city and the uh, all the different citizens of the city that can try to get other different type of broadband. So that was the next step in that. It went very well. It was really quick on that. And then the Walson Center, um, not a call the URDP, called the Urban Renewal Plan. Um, it's very similar to our URDP in the downtown, but now we're looking at Walson Center. So that that's that was had a good conversation about, and we moved that forward for the next step to allow that to happen. So um, good conversations about that in committees. Both of them were taken out of the city council regular agenda meeting and for a vote. So good positive recommendation and we're moving forward with both of those. For the Wallston Center plan, um, Noel, um, is there a specific area that's been designated? Yes, it's it's everything that's around that particular Wallston Center where the old Wallston Theater was, but it go it stretches out quite a bit. It stretches all the way down to Clay Street by the um, 80 Clay, which is the, you know, the Quincy Housing Authority. And it pushes out to uh, the Walston uh, Firefighters uh, Station, which is on the other side of Newport Ave. And then it stretches really down to a good area um, down by the, the, the alcohol liquor store down there. So it, it's and it's it's obviously includes the Walston MBTA. So it's kind of a kind of a long stretch of area, which will allow those businesses to, you know, to get to another level. We got to help them out. Yeah, so it includes that stretch where that uh, terrible fire was a few years ago. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's that that blighted area next to the Walston um, uh, fire station. Obviously, right there on Newport Ave is in that particular area. It's kind of like a little more of a rectangular area, but it, it's a good particular area that we can spark uh, economic growth as well as as just you know doing a great job with the with that particular area. It's time. It's way overdue, Joe. We've been working on this for, for some years now, ever since I've been on the council now, seventh year. So um, it's finally got its its time in front of us because the downtown, the North Quincy area has been able to to do their their projects. Now it's time for Wallison Center. Yeah. So do you know, is the city planning on kind of taking any property, you know, and then having it's it? Very good question. It's a very good question, Joe. And as time goes along and as parcels and different, different acquired properties from developers, private investment happens we'll see what happens with that i really don't know i can't answer that question okay very good uh understand too that the capital improvement plan got introduced capital improvement plan is underway um it's something we've been rolling with a five-year plan uh finally the the mayor and the administration came forward with some items uh the animal shelter is on there for 15 million i know it's ballooned a little bit but the construction costs i mean when i first got onto the city council we were voting on that so it's 2016. It's been a long time since we've come back at it. Luckily, we've been able to get the dog park already up in order. Now, the folks are waiting for the animal shelter. So, 15 million is put into the finance committee. We'll look into taking that out probably in another couple of weeks. I guess I could say. Uh, we also have three million dollars for other vehicles. I guess I could say maybe police vehicles and other apparatus that we might need around the city. That's something we always do. And then public buildings is $7 million. So there'll be three appropriations separately to be taken out of the finance committee for um, to, to dig into a little bit more with your teeth with basically um, going through the different line items. So we'll all put into committee. Really what's important is a lot of times people see these on the agendas. I'm like, oh, they're going to vote on that tonight? No, it doesn't work that way. You have to put it into your committees. Put it on the agenda. You got to put it into committees. And you also have to advertise, Joe. Um, that's how it's set up, you know, so sometimes 10 days, sometimes 14 days, 
We get it on the agendas. We advertise it, let the public know, have a public hearing. If we have to for certain items. And then we, we take them out of committees um, and, and talk about them at our separate committees. And then during the regular scheduled meeting, uh, city council, um, the chairpersons will take it out of the committee and for, for regular vote. So that's how it usually works. Yeah. Do you anticipate uh, that happening this session or not till the fall? I anticipate some of those items coming out this session. I really okay. do. Okay. We have the budget meeting starting up on Wednesday, um, the 18th, and then we have Monday and then Wednesday. So Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday for the three finance committees. I do anticipate um, at least that animal shelter coming out before the break for the summer. So we'll figure out what the timing of it is. And um, Councillor um, Chuck Phelan has the finance and we're going right into finance in a, so actually tomorrow. We're going to finance tomorrow. So we're going right into it. We'll try to get it done before June. And then he'll have some more time until our last meeting on June 22nd. Um, it's kind of late this year because we have Juneteenth. I think actually Juneteenth might be the 20th. And Tuesday, the following day, I think, I believe is the 21st. So that'll be our last particular meeting. Sometimes, some years, it's the 15th, last meeting, you know. So we got a little extra week, but we'll get them in. One more thing that was pulled out of committee that was for a vote last night was the Pine Hills Sanitary expansion. 16.4 was approved with six votes. And uh, for the bonding, you obviously need six votes. And it got exactly six votes last night. So that is going to move forward. And um, they, they actually took about 2.5 off to make the price right at 16.4. So I believe it was a good vote. It was, it was, it's something that will get some money back from it, which will be great. Um, they'll be obviously charging for plots and burials. And we, we really, really need it in the city, Joe. Um, so we're, we're going to move forward with that. Okay, very good. And um, I see, too, that the um, Climate Action Network had a special honor. Unfortunately, we had them on the agenda and they had a couple, couple of COVID exposures. Oh. So we had to postpone it to a later date. Um, so unfortunately, we'll have to put that back on the agenda again. And, and you know, that's just the way of life, Joe, that we're going to have more COVID exposures with folks around the particular area. It's unfortunate that, you know, uh, but you know, to make it better, better safe than sorry. And uh, we'll have them back in very, very soon. Okay. They're a great good. group, you know, the 10 year anniversary. So they're a great group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did you want to, uh, I know that uh, you had mentioned the passing of a Councilor Mahoney's dad. Uh, yeah, it's unfortunately, Council Mahoney's father, Joseph Mulligan, 94 years old, just passed away. Um, he spent a lot of time with the plumbers union, local 12, married to his wife for over 70 years. So, and couldn't make the meeting last night. She's been, uh, she's been really taking care of her folks. You know, she doesn't live too far from them going down the street. I know how she feels. I've been taking care of my dad for the last couple um, month and a half here. So um, I, I guess we're getting to that age, Joe, where, you know, we kind of have to take care of our parents. And unfortunately, uh, Anne's father, uh, father passed away. Anything else we should mention right now, Noel? I think that's it, Joe. And um, we're, uh, we're getting back into, finance tomorrow night 6 30 public hearing and then 6 45 we'll start the budget hearings we'll run them over three different days and we'll have all the department heads in like we usually do looking forward to it joe it's uh, an annual tradition <laughs> as it were for sure yes, that sure is <laughs> great to talk to you Noel. it's i'm exhausted just watching you walk so <laughs> thank you we're getting our steps in you know joe and it's feeling good this morning we're up at uh, 2,000 steps so far this morning and, um, you know, it's beautiful. How about the weather, huh, Joe? The it's last gorgeous. few days have been really hot, but today is a beautiful, beautiful morning. About 65 degrees, so you got to get your walking in while you can. Try to get your exercise, you know? <laughs> Our morning calisthenics with <laughs> Counselor DeBona. <laughs> Pretty soon, no, you'll be able to do that in the Senior Olympics. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'll be over there. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much, Joe. You have a great day and take care. Oh,